I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I find it necessary to warn you. You need to know that things are going to get bad. It's not going to be the way it is now or the way it was. It's not going to get better. I want to give you all a glimpse of what the church, those people that go to church on Sundays, that church, what the church is going to look like in about 20 years. God is exalted. I didn't hear you. God is exalted. The devil is defeated and we have the victory. God is exalted. Devil defeated. We've got the victory. Now from your belly, God is exalted. The devil is defeated. And I still got the victory. I give you 30 seconds to scream real quick. Get it out your system. Yes! I still can't hear you. I said, I still can't hear you. Come on, let's shabak it. The high praise of God be in their mouth. A two edged sword in their hand. Shout now. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. So I got a word. I got a prophetic word for you guys today that I want to share with you that the Lord gave me. The Lord usually speaks to me in visuals and it gives me, you know, a way to just show you something. So I'm sitting here, I'm praying and he gives me a word. So I want to share with you guys one of the things that the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me this wave. Guys, I want to share this dream with you that I had. God showed me that. God put this in my heart this morning. Lord. Hallelujah. Joseph, how are you? How are you? Mbazi Joseph, how are you? Wait, wait, wait. Fix now. Two of you will be pregnant. Oh. Two weeks now. Two of you will be pregnant. <laughs> Receive your baby. Hey, Jesus. Receive your baby. Hey, Receive your hey, Receive money. Jesus never reached his potential. Now, I know this is messed with a lot of people's theology. For our warfare is not with flesh. What is your name? Blindness. We bind the spirit of blindness now. Come out, blindness. Come out. Declare you will never have to worry about sweating over a budget. The only thing you will have to do is sweating over how you're going to spend the overflow. I decree an abundance of finances is being released into the pew. If you believe it, give your neighbor a Yep. Yep. I'm not I'm not making it up. I'm not I'm not exaggerating. You need to know it is going to get bad. I want you all to think about something for a second. If you don't think it's going to get bad, I just want you to just kind of think about the trajectory of things. Think about how things have just changed. Just e you know what even in our regular lifetime. Some of you all are old. some of you all remember how we used to um for any of you all who are 40 or 50 or 60 or older, let me ask you guys a question. I'm going somewhere because I'll just, just work with me on this one. Some of you old heads out there, whenever you wanted to hear your favorite song back in the day when you were a little kid, not you guys that are in your 30s, not you that are in your 20s, but you that are 40, 50, especially 50 and up, when you wanted to hear your favorite song, how did you hear it? But how were you able to hear your favorite song? Remember, you couldn't just push a button and play. You had to wait for the radio to play. You, wait, you waited patiently by the radio. You probably had a little tape recorder. In order for you to record your favorite song, you had to have two fingers. You had to push the play button and the record button, right? Things have changed just really just even socially. Now, think about the church. Think about how the church was, even myself. I didn't go to church growing up. I was... Listen, church and me, we weren't, that was not, we were not an item, okay? We didn't see things eye to eye. We weren't on speaking terms. They didn't know them. I did go once or twice, though, to get some donuts. I, I do remember that. But church was a respected institution. The pastor was a respected professional, a respected person. You didn't walk around the pastor 
if you were one of those guys on the corner with your alcohol and your brown paper back, because back then they were even more respectful, they would have the, the alcohol covered up. If the if the pastor walked up, what would happen? Take your hat off, put your brown paper bag behind your back. Rev, how you doing, sir? If a lady walked by, same thing. It's changed. And so if life, the trajectory of life has, has, has gone in a certain direction, with it, the trajectory of church and how church is conducted, I can promise you this. What we saw in the intro, oh, that's what it's going to be like. More and more. So I've told you all before that those of us that like to adhere to sound doctrine, that think the word of God is enough, you and I will be the minority. That is, if we're alive. Now, some of you all folks are kind of up there in age, so you might have to worry about it. But some of us who got 50 more years left, like myself, we're going to run into an awful lot of foolishness. And they're going to look at us as we're the ones in the wrong. Think about it politically. What you see today in the streets, on TV, that would never have been accepted 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But it, as a matter of fact, if you disagree, you're in the wrong. You're a bigot. You're a hate monger. Speaking about the Bible is going to be, at least in the political square, that's going to be hate speech. So that's one battle we're going to have to deal with. But even on our own home turf at the church, there's another battle to deal with. That's just biblical normalcy will change. What will be normal then will be the outrageous thing 10, 20 years ago. That's what's going to happen. You guys, you guys are probably saying, nope, 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 nope. But we're going to look at some scriptures and we're going to see that. Again, look at how the tides are turning. Think about this. Think about the denominations that are exploding. The charismatic and Pentecostal uh, denominations, those are the ones that are growing. Think about doctrine. Think about what we used to hold to as sound, just orthodox teaching. That's going by the wayside. Whatever you held as sound teaching, it's going to drop. Whatever you hold or you think is heresy, it's going to increase. That's a fact. And so some of the teachings that you hear some people espousing, well, that's one way you can just tell they're on the wrong side of history and the wrong side of heaven because that was never normal. But anyway, one of the things you're going to see definitely is this. I would predict, I'm not a prophet, so I'm just predicting that the Lord has not told me this, but I would venture to guess that probably at least, maybe at least, what do you guys think? Maybe half of the preachers in America half of the pastors are going to be women. Do you all agree with that sentiment? You're going to see pastors such as Pastor Beth Moore. And as plain as day, God put a picture in my mind of a metro uh, bus stop in Houston. And I jotted down on a note what I felt like God was saying. He didn't talk to me out loud. I felt it in my spirit. I, j I jotted down on a piece of paper, take money with you. I will show you who to give it to. I mean, you know, and I thought that morning, what if I was making this up? And I thought, well, you know what? So what? He's not going to despise me because I thought I understood him to say so and so. So she says it doesn't matter if 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 I made it up. He's not going to be upset with me. We well, just use his name. So yeah, I think he will be a little bit bothered. But that being said, let me just let you all know that each and every last clip that you are going to see is going to be absolutely silly. It's going to. I, I just think it's just dumb. It's just some some absolutely moronic things are going to come out of these people's mouths. But this is going to be the mainstream. If it isn't the mainstream already, I, I, I haven't decided. Maybe you all can tell me what you think. But what is mainstream Christianity? We and we know there's a difference between those who are actual Christians, those that heaven has recognized as Christian and those that are here on earth that are just call themselves Christian. And so I'm trying to figure out I haven't figured out, at least internally, what is mainstream? Is the mainstream that that we just saw and more of the foolishness or the sound stuff? I don't know. I'm starting to lean towards thinking that the mainstream Christianity, or mainstream church, the mainstream branch of Christianity, or those, and again, those that call themselves Christian, we know that everybody that calls themselves a Christian is not a Christian. All right. But in the mainstream, the Beth Moores and, and the lady pastors and so forth. People like, oh, the new bishop, the new anointed, 
Sarita Jakes. What's we'll say about the woman? What does the Bible say about the woman, honey? In Genesis 3 and 15, after Eve has it be, uh, eaten from the forbidden fruit, yeah. the, uh, God tells the serpent that the seed of the woman is going to crush his head. But he also says that the seed of the serpent is going to bruise her heel. Mm -hmm. And so I have been really, really helping so many women understand that just because your heel has been bruised by a divorce, by a teen pregnancy, doesn't mean that you can't crush the serpent's head. So something that that absolutely just <laughs> and I'm, I'm you know what I'm gonna avoid being nice that's just dope. She called she literally called his heel her heel, referring to Jesus as a her. Again, everything that you're gonna hear, none of this stuff is gonna be smart. None of this stuff is gonna be intelligent. None of this stuff is gonna, that they're gonna say out their mouth is gonna be remotely biblical. But here's the problem though. Here's the problem. Every last one of these clips also, even though we see how foolish they are, they have been accepted by people in their church and other people on the outside. And someone's going to say to us, if we try to correct them or raise our hand in objection, who are you to say, who are you to judge? How do you know, that, who are you to say who God can't use? All these little things like that. Who are you to say those things? And so that's the fight we're going to see. It'd be one thing if all we had to do was fight the world, but we're going to have to fight our own people. People that, that say that they're a part of our family. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate that. People who say that they are believers, they're going to be the ones that we're going to fight with more. Because isn't it sad that even the world recognized wolves, but the body that is supposed to have the Holy Spirit doesn't recognize wolves? Isn't that something? Now, there is one thing that the world does want, though, the world is okay with. And more and more increasingly, the church is. And that is this acceptance of the LGBTQ community into the church and even and even letting them coming in and use a church and to play church. And every time I say covenant, you say an agreement between us and God. As we are gathered here for coming out Sunday, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God. See, it's gotten to the point to where nothing shocks us anymore. We see something, it's almost like, I kind of expect it to happen. I kind of expect to see something silly, something stupid, something foolish, something more and more shy, something that's pushing us more and more past the limits that we thought was reasonable. As a matter of fact, what's happening is this. It's going to get... I, can I give you guys a scary thought? Let me, let me, let me give you guys a scary, a scary thought. T-I-M, thank you. Let me give you a scary thought. Stephen Furtick is going to be close more closely associated with normals he'll be more like the normal than what we're going to see we're going to wish for the days man if we can just have more sound teaching for people like Stephen Furtick right that's how that's how bad it's going to get we're going to go into scriptures in a little bit we're going to show you the scriptures I'm not just this is just me just making this up or giving my my thoughts but how bad is it when Stephen Furtick is the one more closer to orthodoxy but even Stephen Furtick says some absolutely loony things. The power of God was in Jesus. The healing power of God. The restoring power of God. The same power that made demons flee was in Nazareth. But Jesus could not release it because it was trapped in their unbelief. And there's one thing that even Jesus can't do. One thing that even the Son of God can't do. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. Now, all of what he said, I, it, that's just complete silliness. And now he's a pastor. Went to seminary and just it's like, you know what? Man, I forget seminary. I know what, what makes my audience feels good. That's I know my Bible might say differently. I get that. I, I understand it. But doggone it, the people need to hear a word. They need to hear not just a word from heaven. They need to hear a word that's going to tickle them. They need to hear something that's going to just make them feel good. Something that's going to make them not just feel good. Make them feel good about me. Yep. You got to make, I got to make them feel good about me. I got to make them buy my CDs. Or do, you know what I said? CDs. Like I'm, you can tell I'm not, I'm up there. Do they even have CDs anymore? Uh, <laughs> tape deck cassettes, make them buy my, uh, my, my, what do they have now? My, my, my downloads, uh, buy my books and so forth. Yeah. They need to buy into me. Now, what did Jesus say? Let's let's go to a couple of passages before we get into some more of these people. You eight track tapes. <laughs> uh, let's go to a couple of these. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 11, he says, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Now, do you think that Jesus is saying this just because? No. 
Jesus means that many false prophets will arise and he says will lead many astray. I don't know what many is, but many is a lot. Many false prophets will lead people astray. It's going to happen. Now, we're going to talk about why I'm even bringing, because there's a reason why I'm bringing, I'm not just putting this out and just say, hey, y'all, it's going to get bad. Oh, I'm not, I'm not just being the bearer of bad news. There's a reason why I am bringing this up, but for those who may think that, nah, Corey, I think you're, you're exaggerating. Nah, I think you're, you, no, and it's not going to, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Again, Jesus says, so what else did Jesus say? Jesus, this is Jesus again. We've covered this before, guys. All right, just in case you didn't know. I didn't write the scriptures. Someone else did. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And them doing so, they happened to catch some of the words that Jesus wrote. Look what he says again, also in Mark 13. Verse 22, he says, For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect. Look what he says, though, but be on guard. I have told you all things beforehand. He said, listen, guys, it's going to be it's going to get bad. It is going to get bad. But see, I've told you this ahead of time. Well, we didn't know it would get this bad. Well, did you read your Bible? Now, we know the heretics out there, they're not reading their Bibles or they're just glossing over. It. But for us, it's in the scriptures. He's warning us. He's letting us know is now, before we get to it, I want to ask you guys, why do you think he's warning us? He says, be on guard. See, I've told you beforehand. Why do you, why do you think so? There's a reason why he's warning. But also notice what he says, though. Something's kind of kind of frightful. He says that they will perform signs and wonders. They will perform signs and wonders. Now, signs aren't necessarily miracles. They're not, you know, they, they don't necessarily have to be legitimate. They can look like they're just, like like a David Blaine. They can do, you know, sleight of eye, sleight of hand, whatever you call it. They can do those kind of things. But they're going to perform things to make it look like something's happening. Or it also includes they will actually do some things. Guess what? I believe, just like they believe, and like you know, there is demonic activity. And there is some power in this demonic activity. And well, shoot, I would imagine Satan's going to say, well, man, listen, if you're working with my team, let me sign you a nice contract. I've got perks. I've got benefits. I got all kinds of things going to come your way. Let me also have some 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 things performed at your hand that I can do that that heaven has allowed me to do because the devil still does have some power. He has not been stripped of his power. Right. He's got some power. And so how about how about uh, you, Mr. Furtick? Or how about you, Mr. Rogers? Or how about you, uh, Mr. Osteen? Let me just give you, now, not really Osteen, because he's not really into the powers. He's just into the smile, the jail, the makeup. So we'll just give you an extra box of Avon and, 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 and Olay and whatever else for you, Osteen. But for everyone else, how about we just help you perform a few little things? Matter of fact, I've got a few demons uh, that can work with you. How about that? Because that's what's going to happen. Jesus is letting us know. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us how we covered this before, how God had even allowed the false prophets of old to perform these signs, to do these things, and even to give them, gave them a word to give so that he can test them and lead away uh, the, the ones that really aren't legitimate. That's going to happen. He's going to test a lot of people. And I can promise you more people will fail the test than will pass the test. It's going to happen. But Jesus says, be on guard. See, I've told you all these things beforehand. Now, he makes this little statement about Jesus not being able to do anything. Jesus can do what he wants to with or without your faith. Most people that he, a lot of people that he healed did not have faith. But again, that's him, that's him giving himself an out. The reason why things aren't happening the way I told you they should because of your faith. But it's not just him. There are people that will sound and seem like they, that sounds like something, that sounds educated. There are people who are heretics who don't have a heretic sound to them. What I mean by that is they sound refined, reformed. They sound almost educated. They sound like they know what they're talking about. One such person who I believe, and maybe he does have a genuine heart, um, but his understanding of scriptures is off. That's this person, uh, David Hernandez. Listen to what he says about the Holy Spirit. You, you all see if you catch it, just he's going to say it immediately. Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ. Did you hear that? Let me play it again. Maybe you didn't catch it. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ. He said the Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ. Wait a second. Wait a second. Because I must have missed that. <laughs> Let me see. Well, yeah. 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 Let me see. Mind of Christ. Mind of. You know, I, I don't know where that is. I don't know where that is in my Bible. I, I, I'm going to do a deep dive into the scriptures and see if I can find that. But the Holy Spirit is the mind of Christ. But notice, everybody's got their hand up, their eyes closed, head back. They are so-called in the spirit or they're looking for it. They're not paying attention. He could have said whatever. He could have did whatever. And they're like, yes, because it sounds spiritual. It sounds good. And you want to ask him, David, what in the world did you just say? What? What? No, Maria, I know I won't. I won't find it. I won't find it. But maybe if I take, if I tear some pages out and cut some some verses and put some verses from here, put them over here, and move this down here, put a little math in it, carry the one, move the T over here, replace it with an R, an R, a, if down in the south, uh, an S. So how do you come up with that? Well, you don't come up with it through the scriptures. And again, if you are saying something about God and it does not come from God or the scriptures. It, the only place it comes from is from hell. And this is where you can get away with saying, what in hell are you talking about? Because that didn't come from heaven. It didn't come from the Bible. You are literally saying something demonic. It'd be one thing to say something demonic if you're speaking in these fake tongues, but you're saying something demonic in English. Wow. <laughs> wow. He's the omniscience of God. This means that the mind of God, the nature of God, the power of God, the will of God, the intentions of God in the earth, all of it is searched, understood, comprehended, in completion by the Holy Ghost. I'll let you go back and listen to this again uh, on your own, but nothing that he said made sense. This, this, and people say, Corey, that's a person who is, who is an intelligent person. He's not like the Sid Ross. He's not like the Benny Hens. He's not like the, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Ignorance and stupidity is the same, no matter if you say it loudly or softly. There's a reason why these people do not come and talk to people like myself, other folks who are trying to, let's say, let's just look at the scriptures. There's a reason why. Not that I'm somebody special, but anyone that's going to hold their feet to the biblical fire, they don't want that. Where they will go is, other channels, other places where they can have aid and comfort. And so they can get away with that because it sounds good. Whoo, that just tickled me. That just, that, that, that was wonderful. So here we got one guy who's messed up about Jesus, that is Furtick, who might be the mo most sound of, that's again, mind blowing. He is probably, you know what? Yeah, he's the, he's the most sound of, of all of these people. That's the scary thing. And then you've got David Hernandez, who is just messing up the Holy Spirit. And then we've got my good friend from up north in Chicago, the guy with the university, the, the seminary, the college, um, the graduate, Jethro Bodine himself, uh, Marcus Rogers, and his statement about the Trinity. Now, the this is his mouth. These are his statements. You listen to what He's saying God already had Jesus, the son in mind. Um, so even though he wasn't a eternal being, it was more that he was an eternal thought because God was all knowing. I never denied the where, where does it say that the son was a person? We read we read in first Peter 120 that he was always eternal, but he was a thought in God's mind. Right, it was, even though he manifested himself in the son, just like he manifested part of himself in the bush. There was still when he was in the bush, he was still in heaven when he was in the sun on the cross he was still in heaven it's the same exact thing when the holy spirit was in, Ma in mary the, the father he was still in heaven always one but able to take uh if a human being if i can take my arm and cut my arm off and throw it over there why can't god do that
<laughs> I'm sorry, Marcus. I'm not laughing at you. Yes, I am. I'm. I, I can't lie. I'm laughing at you because if <laughs> if I can't take if we first of all, what human being you know is taking his arm off and throwing it over there? But, but God would do the okay. <laughs> yeah, but he was an eternal thought. God, yeah. But again, again, we're not allowed to question him. In doing so, we don't have the spirit. And we don't know how to read our Bibles. Now, the person on this list is probably the second most, and this is also scary, the second most sound of all of the people. Buddy up in Tulsa. Good old Mike Todd. You know, when you don't know the Bible and you try to get deep and you try to make it seem as though you know the Bible and you're trying to find, be, be profound and say, hey, I've discovered something. Why haven't X, Y, and Z? And then someone said, Mike, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, Mike, be quiet. Go back and tell everybody you apologize for that last sermon. You took some medication. Things weren't right. Whatever. Because what he is about to say here, he said in the sermon, it's still posted. Why it's up, don't know. But... Surely someone has told him that's not in the Bible. Satan's favorite sin. Just say it with me. Gluttony. How many people, by show of hands, have ever heard a full message on gluttony? In the comments? Why in the world, if this is one of the seven deadly sins, have us, some of us being in church for four and five decades, never heard a complete Sunday morning message on gluttony. Somebody get a message to him. Let him know about gluttony and the seven deadly sins. Just let him know. Let him know. <laughs> somebody, and somebody's like, well, well, what's the problem? Well, I tell you what, just go Google it. And, and just go, Google the seven deadly sins. One, see where it came from. <laughs> But he's a pastor. He's got thousands and thousands of people that are under his pastorship locally that he's supposed to be shepherding. And then tens of thousands of people that are watching, maybe hundreds of thousands of people that are watching it and listen to him. And they don't understand. Someone said, wait a second, I've got, I've got to address this. Someone says, why the hate on Marcus Rogers? Don't hate on Marcus Rogers. We're upset with Marcus Rogers for his hate against the scriptures. Marcus Rogers has given two, at least, no, three prophecies, three failed prophecies. My question is to anyone out there, and by the way, we're going to do this. This is going to be kind of neat because people say, why am I a false prophet? Why am I a false teacher? There are people that have been asking themselves, why are they calling me? Marcus has asked that question. Pagani has asked that question. Isaiah has asked that question. All this, You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just give them, here's example one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, Marcus Rogers has said that he has heard from God. In the opening trailer, he talks about how often he hears from God. Well, did he hear from God when God told him Trump's going to win? But that Trump stuff is dead, Corey. Quit rehashing it again. Tell him to apologize for it. Tell him to repent for it. Tell him to stop saying he's hearing from God. The second one was when he said that also likened to it that, that Biden would not be in the White House. Okay. That goes along with the Trump prophecy. Then he also stated that a certain person uh, did not, has never spoken in tongues. And the person says, yeah, I did. You should have asked me that. Uh, and a few other prophecies we won't get into. The fact that he butchers the scriptures, the fact that he has no idea, no clue of the identity of God. Did you hear what he just said? You asked, why are we hating on Marcus Rogers? We're not. We're hating on his horrible scripture reading and understanding. He just, if you didn't catch that, then you, sir, not to be rude, but you and many more people need to go and just learn what the scriptures say. That's just ridiculous what he said, that Jesus was a thought. Marcus Rogers believes that you have to be water baptized and then have someone who baptized you in water have the name Jesus said over you. If not, then you are not saved. We know what happened when he did it with another person who ended up drowning. Marcus Rogers uh, has said that we ought to try the Spirit by the Spirit. That's Pastor Marcus Rogers, but the Bible doesn't say try the Spirit by the Spirit. Marcus Rogers believes that the word omnipotent and omniscient are both in the Bible. But Marcus Rogers believes that if I put my faith in Christ, 
and allow someone to baptize me in water, which is a good thing. If he, the person is baptizing me, says the wrong formula, the wrong word over me, then I'm not saved. That's heresy. So you want to know what we have against Marcus Rogers? Those few things. Just, just, a, just a few things. Not much. Just a few things. And so I'm not saying so. Again, and if you want to understand what we're talking about water baptism, go back and watch the videos that I've done on water baptism. I just, I just did one just a few days ago. And so, no, you don't have to be water baptized to be saved. Water baptism is fine, but not for salvation. And so, but he, think about it, though. Mike Todd is the second most sound person. Marcus Rogers is opening, is opening a college. That's scary also. And folks are going to go to this college and... Um, feel like they've learned something. Then you've got other people who are, because you know what we're going to find? We're going to find a lot of, a lot of real effeminate men in the pulpit. We're going to find that out. Now, I've covered this guy before, but I think, I think it, I think it, it's worth repeating just to play one of the all time dumbest things ever uttered out of a preacher's mouth. Ever uttered out of a preacher's mouth. And that's by our good friend who now has a perm, now looking like Superfly, the Apostle Dr. Matthew Stevens. Genesis 2, 7. Now, keep this verse in mind. Let's reflect. Once upon a time, God went walking through the garden and said this, be fruitful, have dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth over the earth, do this, do this, reign, subdue, all of the things God told Adam to do. Do you know the greatest problem with that? You know the most powerful issue with that? Do you know the most profound challenge with that? Adam did not have a body. Do the research. God's instructions to Adam came before Genesis 2-7. He said, Rule, have dominion, be fruitful, multiply. He said that to something with no ears. Something without a physical frame. Now, after you pick your, your chin up, because it just fell open after he says Adam didn't have a body, the part that's really funny is when he says, do the research. It's obvious. Do, do the research. Go back and... <laughs> okay. So let's just read. And, and of course, we covered this. We won't go over it again. But... Again, guys, this is our future for the church. While I'm giving you the bad news, I'm going to give you some good news, but also give you some 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 fighting instructions. Hey, man. Now, I didn't cover this, but you also need to know that the future of the church is going to include the reawakening, the dawning, the reemergence of apostles and prophets. If you go to a church and your church is not ran by an apostle or prophet, something's going to be wrong with your church in the future. If your church isn't ran by an apostle, a prophet, a woman, an effeminate man, someone who's casting out demons, and something's wrong with your church, that's what's going to happen. Now, how they became an apostle doesn't really matter. They can be self-proclaimed. Someone can lay their hands on them, whatever. But now, are they legitimate apostles? No, because, again, all these apostles, all these prophets, not not one escapes having bad doctrine. All of them. I have never met one apostle on the planet, one self-proclaimed apostle who does not have bad doctrine. Not one. Not one. And I haven't met an apostle who is willing to talk with someone um, who has sound doctrine about their apostleship. No, they'll talk to each other. And they'll talk about the people who are talking to them. And there's a problem. See, the problem is we are going into a time where it's going to be bad and we are going to be told, no, no, leave them alone. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, not just leave them alone, but let's just let's just think happy thoughts. Let's just be let listen, let's just be team joy, team happy, team smile. Let's all look for the best. Let's not tell people how bad they are, where they're in sin. Let's not tell people what's wrong with them. Let's not tell, let's not, let's not be judgmental. Let's only talk about the good. Let's talk about kittens and poodles, rainbows, and 
lollipops. That's it. That's it. Not going to talk about hell. We may talk a little bit about heaven because we're all going to heaven. As long as we're smiling. And who's leading the charge for us smiling all the way to uh, heaven, supposedly? Smiling Joe. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to declare the year of God's favor, to announce freedom to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, good news to the poor. Isaiah went around declaring favor, freedom, victory. All those that would receive it, those that would let those words take root, would see it come to. And so that's what's going to happen. I'm, 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 I heard you. I'm going to, somebody told me to put it on slow mode. I'll put it on slow mode. Uh, but. That's that's what's happening. We are supposed to smile while we are letting people go to hell um, without defending the gospel. No. Because necessarily speaking, the gospel also has to tell what people are saved from, but we can't tell them that they're saved from hell because to do so, we have to let them know about their sin. Can't do that. Can't do that. Now, I want to let you all know something, though. This is something that Jesus says, even though Jesus warned, warned us about how bad it's going to get Jesus did also give this comforting warning. I mean, this comforting statement. He says, when asked, who do you say I am? He says, you are the Christ. He says, blessed are you, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who's in heaven. Look what he says. And I tell you, Peter, and on this rock, which is his word, I will build my church. And look what he says. Here is the good part. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, yeah, it's going to look like, hey, we're down by 30 in the fourth quarter. It's going to look like that. But he's told us the gates of hell will not prevail against who? Against his real church, against those of us that are actually in him, not the people that look like it. You're going to see them wash out. You're going to see them fall away. Oh, by the way, this is what he means by this great falling away. The people who claim and who name him, but who aren't really believers in Christ, who aren't really possessed by Christ. They're possessed by something else. And so you're going to see this, this falling away. You're going to see more and more people, more and more people who had previously named the name of Christ now apparently walking away. And people are going to say, well, yeah, they, these are real, legitimate, genuine Christians who are walking. No, no, they just said they were and they walked away. You know, I, I got on the court a couple of times, said I can play some basketball and walked away. Because what I said and what I was were two different things. Same thing with these believers. But this is a day and age where you can say what you want to say. You can, out of your mouth, profess to be what you want to be. I can, I'm a woman for the day. I, I identify as a woman. I identify as a reindeer. I identify as whatever. That's what's happening. And so the same thing is happening in the church. Now, not just um, are we supposed to smile and not say anything. Have you noticed this? We're not allowed to even call it out. If we do, we are judgmental. And we are on our way to hell. Huh, Todd White? A religious without relationship person, you will study the word to find the ways that you can expose all the false teachers that are out there and not realize that you're actually leading people to hell. So you can study the word and you can see how people are giving these, uh, their false doctrines and so forth. And that by exposing it, by, by reading, this, think about what he just said. By reading the scriptures, seeing what's wrong, and by exposing it, we're leading people to hell. Can someone help me make, make sense of that? By the way, can also someone help me make sense of what this guy is going through? What, what's the, he is literally being, he went through his own transfiguration. He would, there was a metamorphosis that happened to Todd White. I don't know if he grew up around some, some Jamaicans or what, uh, or some, and some mountain men, some Jamaican mountain men, because he's got that Jamaican mountain man look going like a Jamaican Viking. I don't know what the deal is right there, but it's distracting. It's distracting. Anyway, but so we can read the Bible. We can see what's wrong, but not tell anybody, not call it out. And if, if we call out the wrong, the error, the sin, we're the ones leading someone to hell. Now, how, what does he say to, to, to kind of make himself feel or look legitimate in what he just said? Nothing. Just go to shout and speaking tongues. This is a spirit-filled church. Lift your voice. We are at war. Bring in the spirit. Come on. It's 
it's just me though. If he were to lay hands on me, I'm going to want him to uh, get some some sanitary, some the little what do you call it, the little the little, the little clear stuff to clean your hands. Just doesn't, brother, you look like yeah. yeah okay, I'll leave it alone. But you're spiritual because you say you're spiritual, and we look at the scriptures and say, well, that's not what the Bible says. If the Bible doesn't say that, then you can't be spiritual. Because to be spiritual would be to come from the Holy Spirit. And if what you're doing is in line with the Holy Spirit, then there's no way you can be spiritual. See what I'm saying, Todd? There's no way. But we're wrong. Because remember, more and more people are going to, are going to attack us for calling out sin, nonsense, foolishness. They're going to attack us. We're in the wrong. When all the while, we didn't come to you asking you to show us or say anything. You came to us. You wanted us to see. You wanted us to glorify you. You wanted us to look and say, look how wonderful you are with your fake leg lengthening routines and so forth. And with your fake demon cast now and all that. You wanted to show us something and we rejected it. It was like, wait a second, where's the scripture? And we asked nicely. Every last one of these false teachers have been asked nicely. They've been approached nicely and they just run and duck for cover. They run away, don't want to speak. And after a while, they just want us to stop talking, stop asking questions. So stop doing what Jude said. Stop defending the gospel. But because if we do, we're leading people to hell. Well, let me tell you where their teachings come from. I'm glad you asked. Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. These, these teachings literally come from the devil. These teachings literally come from the devil. Now, he tells us something, though, and this is why I'm saying this to you. This is the reason why I want you to be alert, not me, because, again, we've already discussed this. We've already covered this. I didn't write the Bible, right? I'm just repeating what the persons, the people who were led by the Spirit wrote, what they said. We're to be on guard, as Jesus says, and be ready. See, I've told you these things beforehand. And then Paul comes back and he says, he says something that's, that's for this day. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said, let's start in verse 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. I'm not necessarily the smartest person in the world, but when you say in season and out of season, that seems to cover all the time. So be ready all the time. Right. Then he says, reprove. Reprove means we disagree and I got to prove to you where you're wrong. That is, if I got sound doctrine. And now I'm also willing for you to prove me. He says, reprove. He also says, rebuke. That means a person who's in the wrong, we need to say, you are wrong. We're rebuking him. I know you guys like saying, I rebuke you, devil. I bind you, Satan, I rebuke you. Well, we're, we're supposed to, the people we're supposed to rebuke are the people who are in error, doctrinally. He says, and exhort with complete patience and, and teaching. You want to know why we stay on this? You want to know why? Now, again, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. But do you know, want to know why we have these teachings, these various teachings on whatever, but then also cover these guys? Do you know why we keep doing it? Do you know why we should keep doing it? Do you know why if a person makes 35 videos about one of these charlatans, makes 40 videos about another charlatan, keeps calling them out? Look what he just said. He said, with complete patience and teaching, with all long suffering, keep it up. Keep doing it. 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 When do you stop calling out sin of someone? When do you stop calling out bad doctrine? When they stop having bad doctrine, when they stop sinning, when they stop doing those things. That's when you do it. That's when you let them off the hook when they stop doing these things, when they stop when they stop attacking people with their bad doctrine, when they stop harming the body. That's when. When when did Paul stop? Let's see when Paul stopped, because it looked to me like Paul went down fighting. He says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. They will have itching ears, and so they will find teachers to suit their own passion. We're going to find somebody that's going to tell me I got a car coming my way. 
that the Lord is going to bless me, that the Lord wants the best thing for me. Because, again, when was the last time you heard one of these fake guys give a prophecy over someone that was negative? The Lord told me to tell you that he's going to take you in two days. <laughs> we don't hear that. No, instead, the Lord told me that your best is ahead of you. He is going to birth something. You've been laboring. People have been behind, been, been against you. And all those folks you thought were your friends have left you. That's what the Lord. Now, first of all, everybody has that as, as a testimony. How many of you guys have somebody in your background? How many of y'all can raise your hand and say, you know what? I got some friends that left me, that betrayed me. Well, we all, that's, that's life. From, from the time that we first had some friends in kindergarten all the way up, somebody turned their back on us. That's just how it is. So that's a pretty easy prophecy. The Lord told me that somebody's got blood in their body. The Lord told me that somebody has some white blood cells in their body. The Lord told me that someone has um, a heartbeat. Just silly things, right? You think I'm, I'm being facetious, but that's what they're saying. So he says, keep doing it. Look, when Paul, look, look at Paul as our example. He says, they have these itching ears. He says, so in verse four, and we'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Now, let me ask you guys a question. See, what I try to do sometimes, I try to say, well, am I on the right side or the wrong side? And I try to imagine myself as I'm the guy that they say that we are. We're the Pharisees. We're the ones that are rejecting. With Well, we're not the ones that are presuming to speak for God. So we've got that in our corner. They are. So false prophets will presume to speak for God. Well, you can't be a false prophet if you never presume or stated that I'm speaking for God. So the only people that can be a cat that can be uh, 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 have the ability to fit this criteria, whether they do or don't, are the folks that are saying they're speaking for God. The people that are actually trying to do these little signs and wonders, these miracles. Jesus says that they're, they'll be the ones that are going to put these false signs up. He's not speaking about the people who are not exhibiting these signs. So it can't be, again, bodes well for me. I'm not part of that camp. You guys aren't part of that camp, putting up signs and this and that. And that's not us. Whether it's right or wrong, we're not guilty of doing it the wrong way because we're not doing it. And then he says, look what he says. Let's go back to it. He says, we'll turn away from listening to the truth. They never accuse us of not listening or reading the word, do they? Their, their accusation towards us is that we're not listening to the spirit. Our accusation for them is that you're not listening to the word. Because I'm trying to find the scriptures where the Bible tells us that you're going to go to hell for not being as in tune to the spirit as you're supposed to, um, but you are listening in tune to the word. We don't have such scriptures, do we? So let's continue. Look what Paul says. He says, as for you, always be sober. Wait a minute, sober minded. Always be sober minded. That means having some control. That means having some understanding. That means I'm not losing control. That's what that means. That's what that means. I see some commotion going on in the chat. So I may, I may want to get in. I'm having a little fun right now. He says, always be sober minded. Endure. Look what he says. Endure suffering. Look at this last part. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Meaning that our work, whatever our work is going to be, whatever it is, I don't care if it's singing, if it's sewing, whatever it is, it's going to be evangelistic in nature. Meaning that it's to draw people to the body, people to Christ. Now, look what he says. Paul says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. But Paul hadn't stopped fighting. I have fought the good fight out. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but, uh -oh, but all who have loved his appearing. That should be us. That, that should be us. All of us who have loved his matter of fact, not just loved his appearance, his appearing, but even loved his word until his appearing. That should be us. Look what he says, though. Now he's writing this way. He says, when you come back to me, verse 13, uh, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas. Also bring the books and all the and the above uh, above all the parchments. I want to do some reading. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. Wait a minute. You mean tell me, here Paul is 
on his, not on his deathbed, but he sees the writing on the wall. Thank you, Douglas Ray. He sees the writing on the wall. He sees, and I'll, I'll answer that question in a second. He sees the writing on the wall. I'm getting ready. He says, I'm getting ready to die. And at the, now think about this. Paul knows he's getting ready to die. And what does he do? Before he dies, he calls out one last wolf. <laughs> Before he dies, he calls out one last, look, I, I didn't write this. I, see if my, gla my glass is working right. He says, he says, beware yourself uh, of, of Alexander. For he did me much harm, the Lord will pay him according to his deeds. He says, beware of him. Guys, look out for this guy. For he strongly opposed my message. He strongly opposed my message. That's Paul saying so. And so this is going to happen. We're going to fight. We're going to get bloodied. We're going to even... And here's the thing, go, guys, we are going to look bad. Let's keep reading. He says, verse 17, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me, the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, Paul's making this statement, though he's getting ready to be put to death. So he's not necessarily rescuing him from every physical danger. But Paul is going to have this glory put upon him, not God's sort of glory, but he's going to be rewarded for what he's done, for his faithfulness. And so keep fighting. Keep fighting. I don't care if, if you if, if you brought this up last week. Well, I said it enough. No, as long as there's as long as someone's committing the crime, then we go ahead and report it. See something, say something. We'll keep doing that again. That's the mandate that Paul has. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep fighting. Let me answer this question. Douglas says, uh, I agree with you, uh, but what can we do in the future when magic comes back and they work miracles and then they're willing to talk to you? How can we pull believers away from the evil the same way that, that, that that's done in the scriptures? The same way. Just the word. Just the word. Like like Friday. Um, just the word. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the word. That's, that's all we got. And there are going to be times where it looks like us giving just the word is not matching them with all the trinkets, all the things they can give. It, it's not a problem. That's not our issue. Our job is to give the word. Just get, thanks, Alfonso. Just give the word. Give the word. And if the devil has more on his team than God has on his, so, so, because we'll go down knowing that we gave what we're supposed to give. We did what we're supposed to do. And the Lord won't be upset at us for them not listening. God is not going to be upset for them not listening to our words. Now, he will be upset with us for not giving our word. That's something that everyone needs to hear. He will, he will not be upset with you for them not heeding your word, but he will be upset with you for you not giving the word. Do not stand in the marketplace and hear sin, hear heresy, and be the one, eh, they're not going to listen to me. Doesn't matter. I'm going to say it anyway. I'm a, are you all listening to what this guy just said? Are you listening? What'd she just say? That's why I, I'm waiting. I am so waiting. They got they got to do it. This is a, this is the fourth largest metropolitan area in the nation, the DFW area, the fourth largest, right behind Chicago, in front of Houston. So at some point in time, these demon slayers got to come to Dallas. I'm going, unless I have something that's already reserved, unless I have some something scheduled I can't get around. I'm I'm going. Um, and they, they're going to, they, I probably shouldn't say it cause they may, <laughs> I don't want them to have security at the door, but I'm going, I will be there with my phone, with my camera. I want to see every demon to get it. Matter of fact, when they cast a demon out, I'm going to interview the demon. Excuse me, Mr. Demon. Cause I should be able to see the demon, right? I, sh I should be, if a demon was cast out, how do I know the demon was cast out? I should be able to see it, right? Or I'll go interview the person that had the demon cast out. I'll interview the person that cast a demon out. I'll give them my middle name, so they, maybe they won't. Maybe maybe I'll put on my my uh, my Tory Majors outfit with my little my mustache and my glasses, and then just walk in there. Maybe I'll go to the front of the line and have them cast out whatever I need to have cast out. Maybe that's what I'll do. But if they when they come, they you're not going to avoid the DFW area when you come. And guys, if you see them coming because they won't talk to me. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and warn some people. Why not? Why not? 
He said, why am I telling on myself? Because I don't think they're smart enough to even catch it. I really don't. I'm just, I'm just being, I, <laughs> yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like the Hebrew Israelites. I'm going I'm to blitz them. I'm going to, I ought to, I swear I ought to do, get me a microphone. I ought to get me a microphone and get me my, get my, uh, my son-in-law and have them be like the guy that reads the scriptures. I can see them jumping on us and beating us up though, so I won't do that. But I will, I will go to, to them and, and confront them and just ask them questions. Because I want to know, why are you doing these things that are clearly against scriptures? And why is it you won't even answer anybody? Why are you leading people down this trouble path? And why are you enriching yourself? I'm not asking for dollars. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But ladies and gentlemen, for you guys, Paul gave us our marching orders. Jesus gave us a warning. He also gave us a comfort. And then Paul gives us the marching orders of what's going to happen. He tells us to fight. Some of us are going to be successful in our fights. We're going to win some battles. We're going to lose some battles. You're going to get bloodied up. You're going to. Get, there are some times where the crowd is not going to be on your side. There are some times where you're going to stand alone. Now, this is where I want to see if you're brave. This is where I want to see if you if you have some uh, something about you. This is where we're going to see your spiritual backbone. Yeah. This is where I want to see if there's now. And I don't know how, how quickly it's going to get to where we become a nation where we are persecuted. Who knows? Maybe it will happen before I die. I don't know. Um, but we shouldn't be persecuted by other Christians in the church. So we should fight that fight. And we should have enough concern, enough love for our fellow brothers who are in the struggle, who just simply don't know, who have been ensnared and hooked by these demons, these um, possessed people. We need to be willing to go and rescue them. And if they don't want to come, hey, hey, amen. We tried. We did our job. One one plants, another waters. But in the end, ultimately, God gives the increase. Amen.